morning, morning. Good morning, Shafa P family. Good morning to all our online viewers. We just want to welcome you to day 24 of lockdown. Good morning from our side, from the Combrink. It's really going well on this side. From our side, we just want to say we miss all of you guys. We can't wait to see you again in yeah, it's about a week and a half left. So we we just over over halfway or more, a little bit more over halfway, week and a half left or so. Um, but from our side, it's really going well. And I think you know, all of us have different experience or have been experienced different feelings during this time of lockdown. Some of us might have experienced lockdown has just yeah just flown by so quickly others might have feel, felt like eternity and yeah and some of us yeah we might have been challenged or actually standing face to face with challenges and fears that we've never um experienced before and yeah so i think there's so many so many emotions mixed emotions from all of us um, so my question to you this morning is do you have a desire for something different in this time do you have a desire for for something supernatural, for something supernatural to happen? Do you have a desire for more of Jesus? Do you have a desire for more and more of Him? I remember on Wednesday evening when we had life group together as, as a life group, it was so special. Um, some of the people really shared their hearts of where they're at at the moment, where's their hearts at and how they feel in this moment. Um, so many questions coming out and one of them, couples really just shared what's going on on the ground on ground level in specifically the food industry um, and people you are know, just sharing if I mean if they don't receive salaries they won't be able to provide for their families and just really yeah you know, hearing that it really gripped my heart and just really broke my heart for what's what's currently happening um, and having those thoughts lingering in my mind actually fear started gripping my heart and I remember going to bed that evening just asking so many questions what if what if I won't be able to to, to Know, to provide for my family um, and uh, yeah I think all of us in this time we have we have so many questions we have so many emotions just going around in our hearts and in our minds and I think some of us are you know bombarded with with specific questions or some of the people in life group shared where they've really been called to a, to a place to be still and really ask themselves again what what's my purpose in life what do what am, what am I doing here am I doing the things that God wants me to do at this moment? Am I really, really living out the purpose um, that God has given me in this time? So I think all of us have different questions, different emotions in this time. And in this time of lockdown, all of us have been called to actually a standstill. Yes, and we're still working, but we definitely have been called to a standstill. And there's so much things going on around us and we, we find it so difficult in this time actually to be quiet, especially I think all the families can agree with me that and um, trying to work and children running around and you trying to have breaks in between giving your wife a break and she giving you a break it can really can really you know get to you but um yeah really struggle to actually get quiet before the lord and before we know it we we can we can get so overwhelmed in this time we can lose start to lose perspective and get very distracted by so many things in our hearts and our minds and just drifting away and can be pulled in so many million or million different directions and then enemy can in this time come and steal our time and come and steal us from being really effective um, and really steal what what God has called us to do and yeah you know, we must really get to a place in this time and that's what we're going to talk about this morning is where our hearts are not divided in this time by the things of this world but be united with God's heart and we shared a little bit about this in the beginning of this year it's so no, it's just amazing just to see how God has been talking to us from the start of this year um, to, to don't have divided hearts, not to be um, so bombarded by the fluff of this world, but to be focused in our hearts, to be united with God's heart and His vision, know that God is God over all. Um, but where, where is, if we ask this question, where is this place and how do we know that God is God? And there's scripture that says, be still and know that I am. I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Um, and while I was preparing this sermon, there was a new song being released by um, a few Bethel people. And I'm just going to read you these words. And it just slots in so beautifully. I want to encourage you to go and listen to the song. The song's name is Peace. Um, I'm just going to read you these words. When my mind is like a battlefield and my heart is overcome by fear and hope seems like a ship that's lost at sea. When the whole wide world is crashing down, I fall to my knees 
and breathing your presence. I'm resting underneath the shelter of your mighty wings. Your promises are where my hope is found. I remember who you are. You're the God who's never far. So I will not be afraid, afraid God. You always keep me safe in your arms. You give me peace. I breathe you in. Take a deep breath and be still and know that you are God alone. And the song, yeah, it actually just spoke to me specifically what all of us are going through. Um, some of us might be, our minds be, might be like a battlefield and our hearts are being overcome by fear and hope you know, seems to, seems to maybe might, might feel to you like you're a lost ship somewhere on the sea. Um, but this is a really special song. I encourage you to go and listen to it afterwards. Now, before I continue, I just want to yeah, give us just an opportunity just to be quiet before God and yeah, let's just pray and let's consecrate this this morning specifically to Him. And yeah, before I yeah, give us an opportunity to pray, I was just reminded by a word that came out in the beginning of this year in worship where somebody responded and felt that we must yeah, just be still before God and God wants to ask us a question that morning. I don't know if you could remember, but yeah, I really feel that yeah, God wants to continue on that word and yeah, let's, let's just be still and you know, open our hearts to him so that he can speak to us and ask us that question that he wants to ask us. As Father God, we thank you that we can this morning, Father, surrender our hearts to you, Lord Jesus, and we want to come and consecrate this morning to you, Father God. Father God, we speak, Father, that you know, we will have no distractions in our minds, Father God, things running around, you know, Father, us. But let's be focused, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for every ear, Father, every eye to be opened up this morning, Father God, so that we can be ready to receive, Father, the word that you want to speak to us. Lord Jesus, I speak, Father, to every family, Father God, every individual that's listening, Father God, that you will come and fill us afresh with your spirit, Father God. Come and fill every room, Father, with your spirit, Father God. Come and fill every room with your peace, Father God. We speak peace to every mind, Father God, and heart that's listening this morning, Father. And Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, that our eyes can be fixed on you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we surrender this morning to you, Lord Jesus, and we say, Lord Jesus, come and speak to us. Come and transform our hearts and our minds so that we can worship you, Father God, with everything in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I don't know if you could remember in the beginning of this year, we, you know, we had a specific word for this year, and we felt that this is the year of God's presence. Very exciting word, and... And I feel really God is busy breaking our boxes in this time of what does it mean? What does His presence mean? What does His manifest presence, tangible presence mean in this time? And um, I think we, we've got so used to we normally expect His presence, His tangible presence to be at church and to be in worship. Um, yeah, but I really feel as we are scattered around the world <laughs> and around um, the country and around in different houses, God is, yeah, God is really calling us to be still and to really pursue him to seek his face and his presence in this time and um yeah and how do we attract more of his presence in this time more of his fragrance how do we attract more of his fragrance in this time so that the people around us in this time the people that are staying with you so that they can see him can feel him can taste him can taste and see that the lord is good and smell him and experience him how can we how can we do that and every morning so far um just after our breakfast i just I just take the the boys for a walk in the garden um, sometimes it's 30 minutes sometimes it's an hour but what's special to me is every time we walk um, the smallest details is so 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 important to them we stop at every little ant nest and see how they work together and how they build their nests um, we look at the different seeds the smallest little seeds um, I remember in the beginning when we walked some some of the earlier mornings when the when the sun was still low and we walked and um, the shadow the sun's shadow or the sun's you know just shining on us will throw our shadows on the on the ground and david got so excited just seeing the shadows and he has had so many questions about the the size of the shadow so some some days when we went out early the shadows were nice and long because the sun was still low but when it's higher up our shadows were smaller and he just got so excited with the you know with the smallest little things here in malachi and um, I remember the one day we were walking, so intrigued with, with the shadows and the sizes of it and the lengths of it. We were walking past this massive tree and it had this massive shadow underneath. And he got so excited and said, Daddy, 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 look at, look at this big shadow. 
um, here we can have a picnic. Um, yeah, and it actually just gripped my, my, <laughs> my heart and my mind that um, we as adults has become so familiar with these small little things that God is really calling us to a standstill in this time. A standstill to, to look and to really to value the small things in life, to value one another again, to value good conversations, to value relationships, to build relationships, and to grow stronger and stronger in Him, but to also grow stronger and stronger and stronger in our relationships with with one another. And we as adults have become so used to the shadows um, that we yeah that we don't take in the smaller little details. We become so used to it and and actually the impact of these shadows. The bigger the shadows, the the bigger places for, for people to gather and to have a picnic and to be in a place of safety and, and security. In the same way I think we've become so used to the, the shadows and the impact that we can have as as spiritual beings um, to the people around us and the way we position ourselves um, to God and in front of God, the same way as we position ourselves in morning morning walks, some mornings we have a bigger shadow, longer shadow, other times shorter shadows, um, or, or sometimes no shadows. Uh, I just feel God is really challenging us to, to come and position ourselves in a place before Him so that we, as He shines on us, we can throw big shadows around us so that people around us can gather in His presence, can see more of Jesus and can taste Him. So the question is, how can we position ourselves in this time, um, being surrounded by family and friends to receive the most from Jesus, to have the biggest impact um, and to show Jesus to them? I'm going to read to you a scripture in, in Psalms 91, and we've read the scripture a few times. I'm just going to read the scripture to you again. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Beautiful scripture. And sometimes we, we just need to get still um, like the children experiencing and valuing the small things in life, could still ask God if our hearts are still in line with His hearts, if our hearts are still beating in line with His heartbeat. I remember in our on our recent mission mission trip to India, God one one evening called us just to a standstill, um, realizing that we, yeah, you know, that it's not about us. This mission is not about us, but it's to reach the people that He loves so dearly. And I remember. Um, one evening we thought, yeah, we retired the end of this mission of the mission, and we really wanted to, to go home and go and sleep. Um, but the need of the people as we walked around, just calling us from house to house, um, and new people calling us, we need to go in, we need to go and pray for for people. Um, yeah, I really realized um, at that moment that I need to die myself, and really God had to call us to a to a standstill at that moment just to take in that moment that that's probably that what he went through so many people just gathering around him day in and day out day in and day out so sometimes God just calls us to a standstill, standstill so that we can align our hearts with his heart and have a com the same compassion that he has for his people and um, the people specifically around us all of us we've been called to worship him we've been called to serve him We've been called to serve His people. And in this time, we feel that God is calling us to a standstill and um, to realign our hearts with His heart, to build a stronger relationship with Him, a stronger relationship with the people around us, and our relationship with one another to grow stronger and stronger. Um, and in this time, our relationships can grow stronger or it cannot. Because in this time, people will look at you as, as the best example that they know of someone that follows Jesus and really loves Him. Young God has, in, has entrusted all of us with, with this position. We has placed us in our families, um, in that lockdown family or community that you are in, or with other individuals. He has placed you in a specific position to love the people around you. He has put you in this position um, so that other people can recognize um, what you have. And God using that opportunity to translate whatever he has started, that revival that he has started in your heart, to translate it into a public setting. And we are... We are servants and worshippers of Jesus of Jesus Christ that have been placed in this position of influence in this time. So where you are now, right now, in your family, you've been placed to influence the surroundings around you and to show them 
the love of Jesus. So the question to us this morning, or the question that we want to ask you this morning is, how can we position ourselves in this time, um, or where can we position ourselves in this time to receive the most from Jesus and to display that to the people? And, and, and at the same time, how, how we can, can we position ourselves to grow spiritually, to grow from strength to strength, and to display Jesus to the people around us? And we're going to re- look at a very special story, a um, really, really special story in John 12 of Mary washing the feet of Jesus. I'm going to read to you this um, out of John 12. So you can take out your Bibles. We're going to read in John 12, verse 1 to 3. You can look on the screen as well. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. The dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume. In verse 5 later, we can see um, that this perfume was so expensive that it was worth a year's wages. Um, That's really amazing. Um, So a jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. Um, In Matthew 26 verse 13, we read, I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be be remembered and discussed. So um, here we can see the setting of Mary arriving there. This uh, this picture of of she, of adoration, a picture of, of, I really feel, of ultimate worship, um, serving Jesus, loving Him, blessing Him, not wanting anything from, from this. Um, she came to bless Jesus, to come and minister to him, focusing on who he is and just loving him, focusing, taking in that moment, being present in this moment, valuing his presence, valuing his presence in that moment. So scripture says here specifically that um, she used perfume that was worth a years of wages and she poured it out on his feet, on him. Um, she So she, I don't, yeah, if we realize she has given everything, she has given so much she be, but yeah i think that one thing that stands out for us here is she positioned herself at his feet she, she positioned herself at his feet not not doing it to get something out of it but but to really bless him to really minister to him and and um, but just as moses we looked a few weeks ago we looked at moses and we looked at yeah you know, what what attracted god's presence um, but just as moses that went up to up to the mountain to be with god and to be in his presence he came down um, with his face shining. So just as Mo- Mo- Moses came up in the same way, Mary, um, being in Jesus' presence, being at his feet, washing his feet, blessing him and valuing his presence. Jesus walking out that room smelling um, like this expensive perfume. But so did she, walking out that room smelling just like Jesus. Isn't that a powerful picture just of of how she, how she positioned herself? Um, and just like Moses' face that, that was shining, coming down from the mountain, after being in God's presence, Mary also positioned herself in His presence. And she came out smelling just like Him, just like Jesus. So, if you look at this story, what was the effect um, of what she did? She didn't just wash the feet of Jesus just to get it clean. Um, and only did, and not only does Jesus smell of this amazing you know, very expensive perfume but scripture says that the fragrance filled the whole house it filled the whole house she smelled like it and the effect of the story as jesus said um so the effect of the story of what she did um was so powerful that scripture says wherever the good news is preached throughout the world this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed the act of what she did was so powerful it will re- be remembered forever and ever and I feel that this yeah you know, was a story of, of one of one of the ultimate expressions of worship, worshiping Jesus. And we're gonna read in James four, it says, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. If we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. So when we serve Jesus, when we serve his vision, when we serve his people, Jesus always makes sure that it affects our life. Just as Mary that washed Jesus' feet, um, it wasn't just Jesus that walked out that room smelling like that like that perfume. Um, Mary was also affected by that. 
she walked out that room smelling just like Jesus and it's the, whole th it's the whole thing of seeking first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added um, as Dr. Corner Becker in the beginning of this year um, shared with us as well how can we have this united heart with God this one heart this one mind with him this one desire seeking him and not be distracted by the fluff of this world not be distracted by our own desires and our own selfish ambitions he said um, it's to end well, it's to be a servant of God and to use every opportunity to give thanks to God, seeking first His kingdom. So as we serve Jesus, as we serve His people, as we, as we seek Him, as we pursue more of Him, we attract the things of the kingdom. Um, we attract His presence, the fragrance, fragrance um, will go out before us. This is that fragrance that filled the home, whole room. It goes out before us and people will, will start to taste and see that the Lord is good. So what attracted the presence of, of God um, to Moses? I don't know if you could remember that, that whole sermon, but what attracted that presence, the presence of God to Moses? And we touched on two topics um, on that Sunday. It says, we said it was his humility and his true worship that attracted God's presence. So what attracted God's presence in the story of, of Mary? It was her heart to serve him and to bless him was her heart to serve him and to bless him it attracted his presence attracted his fragrance he walked out there smelling just like him. so in the same way god has given us people around us in this time to serve to bless him and through this people will see and taste that the lord is good and jesus gave us the ultimate example of serving serving one another and i'm going to read to you the scripture in john 13 it says and since i your Lord and teacher have washed your feet. You ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have to you. Beautiful scripture. Jesus is there, our ultimate example. So people want to see that example of Jesus in our lives. There's people that you locked up with. Um, they're desiring to see Jesus. They're desiring um, actually to, to worship Jesus and have a hunger for him. And um, Some of us are surrounded by people in this time where... You might be the first contact of showing them um, Jesus, showing them the body of Christ um, and who the body of Christ is, who is the church in this time, sharing testimonies. And as we spend more time with him and, and as we position ourselves under his shadow, we get filled with more of him. And we start to smell like him. We, we, our capacities um, start to increase to serve those around us. Um, God desires for us to, to, to sit in His presence and to create a fragrance to attract those people to come and sit down under His shadow, under the shadow of the Almighty, so that people can find true rest and find true peace in this time. So let's not wait for, for a Moses to go up the mountain for you. Let's not wait for, for a Mary or another person to go and sit at the feet of Jesus to start to smell like Jesus, you can go up that mountain and you can come down with the face that's shining you can go and sit at the feet of jesus and start to smell like him talk like him look like him and serve the people around you um you yourself can walk out a room filled with him filled with his presence filled with a heart and compassion um and align your heart with with a heart with his heartbeat um so what makes his heart beat um most of all this is the the people that he has entrusted us with and may our testimonies, just like Mary's testimony, impact not just your family, but nations to come. As that scripture that, um, that said, uh, Mary's story will be known um, forever. Um, I want to read you the scripture in Psalms 46, verse 10. Says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So just as Mary's deed impact and influence so many people's lives, may your life influence nations to seek more of jesus so i want to ask you this question where have you positioned yourself in this time of lockdown and um have you realized if you if you move close if you is in front of a of a light source and if you move closer to the light source your shadow becomes bigger it throws a bigger shadow but as you move further away it becomes it becomes smaller and so as you know in the same way as we seek more of jesus as we come closer to him um as we come closer to him, we, we can reflect more of him. The, the reflection of him is bigger for people to come and sit down in that picnic shadow, in the shadow of the Almighty, in his presence, in a place of true peace and trust. 
So God commissions us as families, as individuals. He commissions us to a, to a lifestyle that can only be successful if we are close to Him, if we move closer to Him. Our heart, me and Mina's heart, um, all of our hearts in church, church is um, to see you becoming successful. We want to see you as families dreaming big dreams. We want to see children um, coming into their destin destinies, fulfilling um, the destinies that God has given them. We want to see you and your children stepping into the purposes. And through your lifestyles, people will, will see the nature, the true nature and heart of God. That's our heart. We want to see you as families to stand before the Lord one day um, and who loved Him well. Um, our heart is that you will have such a deeper encounter with God in this time where you're at your home and um, that you will increase that or that you will as you as you grow closer to him as you move closer to him that you will come and incre increase your capacity to love people to serve the people well and to impact everyone around you to be his hand and his feet and I pray that whatever you think in this time might be impossible um, for this new season or and as you yeah, whatever you feel as a challenge as you pursue his kingdom as you pursue the, the face of jesus as you go up that those mountains as you go and sit and kneel down at his feet that he will come and surprise you with with massive breakthroughs and success so our last question to you this morning is how are you going to respond to the assignment that the father has given you in this we time? need more of jesus in, in our lives we need more of our almighty god our almighty father to be present upon us to be present with us in us through us around us and may we live in this time under the shadow of the almighty of the most high and rest in the sh in, in his shadow it's under his shadow where all hope and peace is found i'm going to say that, that again it's under his shadow where all hope and peace is found we want you to know to yeah, we want you now just i'm just we're just going to give you opportunity to be still and some of you might say ah dobry are oh, we going to be still now um but i want to encourage you as as families as husbands and wives and those of you that can't be be still to give your wife a red card send it to a room for 30 minutes or your husband um send them and to be still in this time and put up some worship music and take everything that you can think of at this moment that that you're facing and the challenges that you're facing, maybe the fears and the impossibilities that, you f that you're facing at the moment, um, and start to declare this truth that our God is a God of miracles in this time. He's a God of, of hope, and His presence changes everything. His presen presence changes the way we look. Um, His presence changes the way um, we smell like Mary. So let's come and consecrate ourselves to God this morning, and let's see how He starts to use us and start to do great wonders among us. I'm going to end off with a scripture, and then we're going to we're going to I'm going to pray for us. In Philippians four verse seven, it says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." I again, I again I will say, "Rejoice." Let your reasonable reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So go to your room, go to the place of quietness, take the scripture with you, and let's rejoice and give those things to God. And let's see God coming through and doing great wonders and miracles around you. I'm just going to end up with us. Yes, Father God, thank you that we can, Father, gather together, Father, this morning, Father, that we could have gathered together this morning around your word. And Lord Jesus, thank you that your, as your scripture says, Father, as we draw close to you, Father, you draw close to us. And as we enter your presence, Father, Father, you come and change us, Father, from the inside out, Lord Jesus. Just as, you, just as Moses, Father, came down from that mountain, Father, where his face shone, Father God, and we had, had to be covered, Father. Mary, Father, she left that house, Father, smelling just like you, Jesus. Thank you as we come in closer to you and as we surrender our hearts, Father, as we kneel at your feet, Lord Jesus, we seek more of you, Jesus, that you will come and show us, Father, how can we, Father, go out, Father, and serve the people around us, Father, and so that the people can taste and see, Lord Jesus, that you are good. Lord Jesus, come and work in our hearts, Father God, come and, come and change and transform us, come and sanctify us, Father God, so that we can become more like you. Jesus, we worship you, we say thank you for this special gathering online, Father, 
Lord Jesus, I bless every family that's listening this morning. I want to bless every individual that's listening. Lord Jesus, come and fill them with your spirit. Come and empower them, Father, to do your work, Father, to do the ministry, Father God, and to serve you well, to love you well, Father God. Come and fill us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go well. We love you. Um, see you on Monday morning. Monday morning, you, we're going to have tea time with Dobri and Mina with, <laughs> with us. Come and have tea time with us via Zoom. We'll send you a link. Um, blessings. Enjoy your afternoon, and we love you. Cheers. Bye-bye.